On-chain voting is one of the simplest projects anyone could imagine on blockchain technology. Since early days of development, voting has been considered to be an important use case for blockchain. With evolving DAOs, needless to say, the community has realized the importance of voting. Yet, Ethereum EIP's repository does not have any standard. Today, we are going to talk about a proposed Ethereum voting standard. Welcome to Peep and Eat, episode 71. I'm Pooja Ranjan, and with me is a very special guest and the co-author of proposal 1202 voting standard, Victor Zhou. EIP 1202 voting standard is a standard track ERC proposal that was proposed in July 2018 and currently is in draft status. To learn more about the proposal, let's welcome Victor. Thank you for joining us, Victor. Thank you, Pooja. This is the first time we have you on our show. So maybe we can start with a brief introduction and um, your way to the Ethereum community. Then maybe we'll follow up with the slides that you have got for us today. Yes. Um, so um, my name is Victor and I grew up in China and I came to US uh, for, um, for grad school. And then ever since I started work here on a day job, I'm an internet, uh, I'm a software engineer in an internet company. And um, uh, for the uh, for Ethereum and blockchain, uh, my journey was like I was I had first heard about block, uh, Bitcoin quite early, like 2011 or 12, and I was a little bit skeptical on that until the time when I heard about Ethereum and smart contract and everything it can be empowered uh, and uh, through a smart contract, and that was like around 2015. And so in 17, it was like a, there was a big uh, hike in the uh, activity of uh, issuing uh, Ethereum uh, ERC-20 uh, and everything. And I was, uh, I, I feel this is a very interesting, uh, not just technical improvement, but also social movement that everyone can sort of own the digital assets. My interest has always been how these digital assets can be used to motivate uh, people to contribute and also to improve the governance. And looking at it, uh, voting has been discussed a lot in different places, being used to make her down uh, prior to um, many things. Um, but it seems weird that, to me that uh, voting standard didn't exist yet. So I think it's, uh, it, I'll discuss more about why I think there should be a standard for voting. Uh, but uh, that's pretty much my journey of, uh, of this, yeah. Thank you so much for your introduction. And it's really nice to know your interest in getting involved with Ethereum community. So without further ado, let's just peep in. Right. Yeah, thanks, uh, Porsche, and thanks Ethereum cat herders uh, for invitation and really happy to uh, talk with about this uh, proposal with all of you and look forward to your feedback. As you know, it's currently in the draft status and many things is still unsettled. I have some, I actually have some design decisions that I'm proposing here for you to give feedback and also for audience. And at the end of the, uh, I will mention the, the prior art and then the help we needed uh, at the end of this presentation. Pleasure. So, First, I will go through the ERC interface um, that, uh, that is in this standard. Um, but um, Pooja does just meant, uh, remind me that there might be audio only, uh, audio only audience. So I will try to be as descriptive as possible. Um, so first of all, um, I um, work with a few uh, contributors and then our, our design was that we will um, design a interface that sub, um, that has three different um, subsets. The first is the core that is required for all the um, voting standards uh, to um, comply with. And there's um, and there's also a metadata ones and also the the stats one. That's um, okay. The metadata version yeah. is trying to describe the internet, uh, describe the voting standards, for example, the issues the, uh, and, um, and everything, just like the NFT. Uh, there's a part that controls the, uh, the transfer, the, the accounting side, but also there's the part that describes the, what NFT is. So that's 
uh, that this is the counterpart of the ERC-27, uh, 721 metadata. And particularly, there is a status sense in the voting standard. So we also include an interface that is ERC-1202 status. And I'll go through them each individually. To begin with, the core side, uh, we call it core because we it's required for all voting standards. And we also intentionally keep it simple uh, as simple as possible. Um, there is some design decision that we made that is reflected in this core part. Um, I, I, would just, I will also uh, further discuss later. The first, uh, of course, you need to be able to vote. Um, we have this, uh, we have this uh, uh, annotation of issue ID that can be incremental or can be um, random or can be, uh, uh, a SHA, uh, a, SHA uh, a hash number of uh, a combination of what's, uh, whatsoever. But uh, the first thing input of the vote is the issue ID. And the second one is a list of uh, option IDs. Um, so a typical um, vote take these two inputs. It assumes there's an issue that you are voting on a single issue and also assumes the multi, uh, there's multiple options that you might be casting. And uh, in particular, this uh, we choose to use an array to store this option ID because we assume that sometimes these uh, can be ordered. And so by make, designing the vote uh, in a, uh, take that takes a single input of issue and multiple input of, all, uh, of options, we allow you to vote on one issue at a time, but for multiple options. And this is different from many prior art that we see, which sometimes assume that a single um, input of options. And also because we choose option ID as a uint, uh, it can represent many things rather than the Boolean. So this is how we see this. Um, I, I also see a lot of our audience here uh, today, which come from, I, I assume Ethereum cat herder. So if you have, um, comments, feedback, suggestions, uh, please don't hesitate to uh, interrupt me and uh, yeah. Maybe we can proceed with the presentation and at the end of the presentation, we'll come back with all these questions again. Right, so the next one is the uh, top options and uh, you, uh, we will assume most of the votes will need the results. And here in the top of options, uh, we, um, choose to um, give, give it this vague name is because we wanted to have the maximum flexibility in representing the results. On one side, um, we give the two inputs, that is issue ID and the limit, which gives us, uh, allows the client uh, who interact with this contract to query for the current uh, top options, regardless whether of the, whether the vote has uh, complete, uh, has uh, complete or not. We assume that status can change uh, over time, can be revoked and, and other things. So this top options is just uh, a um, view um, method in order for the uh, queries to see the result of the result uh, of the of, of one vote uh, of one issue. Um, and uh, to accommodate for multiple inputs, uh, multiple output situ situation, we also uh, design it in a way that it returns an array of uh, of in u int, which is the in the order of um, in the in the order of uh, of the uh, priority the results of that people's votes. So assuming you uh, you're having single um, boolean questions, like let's say, do you support this issue? then the top options and you give it a limit of one, you're getting the result whether the zero is winning or the one is winning. And um, if you are, or sometimes if you want to um, have a, have a uh, vote that has multiple, let's say candidates, and then nine, candid uh, nine candidates, three will become the new board member, then you can have a limit of three and then it will tell you the current winning three of the of the candidates, um, so that's the that's why we designed the top options uh, this way. We intentionally decouple this from the status, and also we intentionally give it the flexibility of querying uh, the results of uh, of multiple uh, output. And the third one 
So the third part is the on vote uh, results. Uh, so we anticipate a, a, on, a vote, uh, in, on vote in, uh, event will be emitted to show that um, particularly which uh, vote has been casted by who and then their input. And just to take a, a note here, uh, I have not uh, been convinced one or the other side whether we should be able to make the vote payable. Uh, I can see there is some of the reason that people want will want the vote to be payable, some not, but uh, I'm not yet uh, sure which one is the better way. So if you happen to have an opinion, I love to hear about this. Like, do you think? people should be able to vote payable or with uh, additional data. That's something that is um, up to debate and uh, for discussion, uh, this design decisions. Um, so that is left out and still working in progress. And so the metadata here is the second part. Of course, you want to be able to let people know what, um, ER, what voting is about, what options are about, and if it's totally possible that people want to store it off chain without a storage, uh, decentralized storage, uh, for example, the NFT 721 or 1155 currently supports, um, it 721 supports uh, two ways, right? One is you can provide the name and then uh, you can provide URI as an image. <laughs> However, um, also people were using JSON schema to provide the content, uh, which can be uh, decentralized or not decentralized for that JSON to where it points to. Um, similarly, um, I think 1155 particularly requires the, uh, or, or primarily assumes the UI to be point to a JSON uh, uh, schema. And so here the metadata is here to, provide kind of basic supports for illustrating what the issues are, what the options are. Um, but we also give, uh, give people the options to point it to an URI and the, um, the JSON schema have not been fully decided yet. Uh, we also haven't decided whether it makes sense to eat, uh, enumerate it through the different proposals or different standing proposals. I, I guess there's, possible, um, there's many ways to filter and uh, it, it, uh, iterate through the entire list of proposals. So that has not been designed yet. Uh, unsure whether that is needed at all or not. So if you have suggestions on that, that would be cool too. Uh, yeah, so that's the metadata part. Do you have uh, any questions or uh, comments? Maybe we can drop all the questions in the chat box and you continue with the presentation and we can come back to them at the end of the presentation if there are any. That sounds good. Yeah. The other one is stats status uh, of the ERC-1202 uh, for each individual issue. So each of them will have a issue ID and then we'll check if the... Uh, if the, um, the voting is open or not. Here we choose to... Um, kind of reduce the complexity and also flexibility only uh, set the, uh, the, the different the two uh, allow two status one is open one is not and so uh, what people can do is if you want to uh, set the status of voting to be open you can like uh, the owner for example or access control roles can set it to be open and then um, usually people assume that the first time an issue is created, it will be open or it will have some sort of a block, a block number uh, within the block number, it will be open or closed. And then um, we can, uh, people can subscribe to the on status change for the closing time and then query the results. Uh, at that time, the top options should be able to give you or the this standard assumes that top options will will behave as if it will give you the right results at the end of the, uh, when the status close, close down. And also we will give people an uh, int, uh, interface to query what vote did the uh, voter cast. Uh, so uh, this is what the method uh, vote off does. So you give it an issue ID and the voter, it will return to you to re the result. 
And particularly this has uh, remained open to both cases, right? The, what happens if a person votes in vote twice in the same issue? Should that second time override the first cast or should the second time be rejected or the second time, let's assume it's a weighted vote uh, to be accepted as additional weight. And so these are all open and we assume there's a many parts that need to become uh, extended or uh, be to considered in extensions. We also know that any decision we make can large can vastly uh, reduce the flexibility of this standard. So that's the what makes the standard really uh, head scratching for, for me because like you, when, whenever you choose one side, you're closing the door for the other side. So this is the main part of the, of the, of the status. And then, so I list a, a bunch of decision, design decisions that we made so far and uh, which includes both what we want to be opinionated about and then we, uh, we want to be opinionless of. Um, so the vote casting and tally should be, uh, but not required to be uh, on chain. So it's a should one, but not must one. And it also supports multi options rather than only yes, no. We believe that as we move more and more onto the, uh, the DAO and uh, to, uh, to vote using voting to get human consensus, we will have more and more different questions and different asked in different way. Yes and no binary ones is not the only thing that we will see. We'll, so we, that's why we intend to, to choose the multi-option, multi-input, multi-output um, for in order to support the multi-options. And we also support on-chain metadata. We assume that uh, if we have a very good decentralized storage in the future, then maybe that's not super important, but for now at least, um, it's, I think it's important. Uh, supporting setting and reading status of a proposal and an issue uh, is also somewhat, uh, it, uh, it, it's a decision that, we, that we're quite opinion about. And also, um, we also support that voting with, uh, hope that we can be able to support voting with native coin or other on-chain token standard. That is, um, that's we, what we're leaning towards, but uh, we have not like fully decided yet. Now, uh, we intentionally to be opinionless about is like how roles are created, what roles are uh, voting, uh, what, what roles are vote, allowed to vote, how issues are created, how metadata are structured, how weight, weights of vote are calculated, how winning options are determined, like rank uh, choice and uh, uh, like, uh, and a bunch of others can be uh, decided in, in various different ways. So we want to avoid getting into that. Uh, I also remember that Vitalik in some of the occasion mentioned that some of the weights should probably be, uh, what's that word? Like, I think it's a square, square root of the weights or, uh, or something. Quadratic. So quadratic. Um, I'm not looking into it and then also I know that in, in blockchain, if creating a, an, uh, a wallet address is, is um, permissionless, it actually opens up uh, uh, some ways to cheat if you uh, are, are calculating the quadruple uh, voting. And so that's what we've been uh, opinionless about and trying to open the door for innovations and, and competition there. Um, so how are issues locked, activated, enabled um, is also what we are opinionless. We see that uh, some votes can have a long time and uh, some, sometimes the votes are scheduled from which block number to which block number. And we want to be opinionless about that. And how executions are carried out are completely left out in this uh, voting standard. Um, we assume that there will be other uh, follow-ups uh, extensions coming up to decide uh, particularly whether it's on-chain execution, who will be will tr pull the trigger, and all these are going to be, uh, I think, should maybe they should be standardized or not, but uh, we are, at least for the core side, we are staying opinionless about, about this. So that is the 
decisions i want to pause here and then see if people have uh questions comments because um, this is probably a lot of choice to make <laughs> i see there are some questions in the chat i don't know if you would like to take it right now oh yeah let me see or maybe william oh. shop if you would like to read it for him if you're interested in it looks like you had code that you wanted to to uh, demonstrate first um yeah so if you want to do the code if you want to do the code first we could do that oh i can i can un answer try to answer your question first and make sure that i cover this uh about using bytes 32 pointers or versus strings what so versus like strings. in the metadata stra standard there's a lot of strings going on there so yeah. I was curious if you thought about using bytes 32 instead that's a very good suggestion, William. I, I appreciate that suggestion. When I started uh, um, drafting ERC-1202 uh, back in 2007 and 2018, I, I, I think uh, Solidity have not yet support very well in, in strings uh, operations. And even today, I think it's still, it, it, it have gone a they're long expensive. way. Yeah, it's come a it, long way, but they're still expensive. Right. So I fully agree with you that uh, maybe have it changed to 32 byte 32 or a pointer to IPFS or uh, could be much cheaper to operate. Now, my the way the, the reason I left it as string is that I think it would be a soft problem or near soft problem when uh, as the uh, when when this uh, con, uh, when this uh, standard is close to finalized. I, Remember, maybe at that point we will um, work with the Solidity uh, work group to come up with some solutions, or maybe we will use change to by thirty two um, to encode the the tax with, for example, with uh, with with uh, different hash functions or converting functions. And uh, if yeah, if you have uh, suggestions, I love to hear about uh, how that conversions to be. But we. We'll probably need to also specify in the code in in the standard um, like how if we decide to use by thirty two how they convert between the the a, a text and the, a string and the um, and well, and, and, think, and the bytes. Yeah, I think the common approach right now is that you don't actually store the text on chain. What you do is you just upload the text to something like IPFS. Uh, the place where people see that the most clearly is in NFTs. In most NFTs, the image of that NFT, like art NFTs, is not stored on chain. Um, usually it's stored, I, okay, <laughs> in the best of cases, it's stored on a decentralized file storage, like something like IPFS or Arweave. So then the URI becomes a pointer to IPFS or Arweave. And both of those are 32 bytes. So you could fit that into 32 bytes as it happens in both 721 and 1155, the URI field is a string, not bytes 32, but the pointer itself is a 32 byte, it is a 32 byte pointer. So what you could do for something that's supposed to be a longer text is just assume immediately that people are not gonna store the text on chain uh, and instead, have the just have them store a bytes 32 pointer to let's say ipfs uh and have the function return that pointer like the pointer will be stored on chain but to actually get the text it's assumed that ipfs would be queried i think that's very valuable um input i will take that down to improve, um, to find a way to improve the uh, efficiencies and to store, avoid storing the long string on chain. Uh, I think you uh, gave a very good uh, pointers on that and I, I like to follow up with you on that. It's very oh, valuable. Cool. Yeah, um, I, I do wanna make it clear that uh, one of the um, parts of this proposal is trying to at least allow people to uh, put uh, some of the text on chain. Um, because we think that uh, it, it for one side, uh, if some if, if a voting is important for a community, for example, a DAO, then um, we like a more reliable way is needed for uh, people to agree on which 
tags are like which options re uh, 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 which option represent what uh, uh, what results, and so um, on. It's uh, it opens of of course each time we direct it to IPFS or off chain storage, uh, we open up to the possibility of um, more security uh, vulnerabilities. Uh, so that is one thing that I'm trying to trade off between the efficiency versus, but I totally agree with you. Seeing how ERC-721 and 1155 does, I think it's totally reasonable to assume that people will, and uh, some people will choose to, to use the IPFS to, re to reduce the cost. Cool. Um, yeah. The other thing I was wondering is, I mean, it's been a while since this EIP was written, I understand, but kind of in the aftermath of 721, I, I, 721 is also technically split into kind of like, I guess what you would call a core and a metadata branch. But I don't know if I've ever seen a 721 not use the metadata. And I'm wondering um, why you've decided to keep the project split into kind of three different interfaces, the core metadata and status, and why you would anticipate that people might split those up as opposed to just putting everything into one core interface. So one thing is that I would anticipate uh, the I, uh, ERC 1618, uh, sorry, 165, the interface identification uh, we will, by splitting them up in three, we will be able to support three different uh, interfaces so that some of the option, some of the votes or issues or uh, voting standard will uh, implementation will support only the core and divide large parts outside uh, and some will not. Uh, the question you mentioned like, uh, the in 721, the, uh, the URL, uh, sorry, the tokens, images and, and descriptions were stored in IPFS is one of the example that it didn't leverage the massive uh, metadata. Instead, it used the JSON schema. Uh, it follows the JSON schema that designed. And here, maybe I think a, a trade-off that people can make is to, just like the, um, just like the coin, uh, have the coin token name stored in S strings directly on chain. Uh, people might choose to store some representative acronym of the, the options to the issue text or issue name. Uh, and then for the rest, more details, images, uh, all the rich content will be stored in the UI. So that's what I would uh, assume people does. And the splitting, splitting them up will uh, allow people to decide which one to adopt or not in a more fine-grained way. Okay, cool. Thank you. Okay, so Thank you. Uh, well, there's one last question here. Uh, why are you making this EIP? Okay, why why do I think it needs an standard or need an EIP uh, for voting? Is that a good description of your question? I mean, I think I'm asking more so like when this standard is made, like who will benefit from it? What like like, will there be like, you know, political elections or something, or is there another type of election that's going on? Like, how is yeah. the ability to vote valuable to the community? Yeah, that's a very good question, Alita. Uh, I actually want to address that uh, in a later slides, but now that you bring this up, I think I can prioritize this. Um, today, so you probably heard about the MakerDAO, uh, it started to use the DAO or voting to, um, to organize and govern its uh, community decisions. And uh, also uh, the uh, Uniswap uh, and a bunch of other examples of D5 are using the way uh, their, their tokens as a voting token uh, to uh, make uh, to, so that their community members getting the to having the token can vote on the governance uh, decisions. Um, so these are decisions that need to be made together and currently there's not a good way for people to uh, to, to to vote in a in, in a standard, and uh, what you can see, I would envision uh, in the future, uh, you will not need uh, just to go to the Uniswap uh, web uh, D app to vote, or go to the MakerDAO D app to vote, or go to Argon 
web to vote. Maybe you can also vote on MetaMask if MetaMask if there's a standard that the voting follows and MetaMask adopt them. Uh, and let's say if you have other places where people can vote uh, in various of uh, different um, community decisions, maybe there will be curations of decisions need to be made and and uh, they will show have an interface that shows those um, issues being proposed. And then if you happen to own the governance token of one of them or multiple of them, then they would, uh, they, you can have a centralized uh, convenience interface to, um, to place to start voting. So having a standard really is allowing human being to uh, on not only guest consensus, but also for uh, machines and different contracts to interrupt, to, to interrupt, uh, to interpret the, uh, the, the voting in a standardized way. Um, without uh, a standard, a stand, standard it, we really don't have a good way to, for interoperability. Let's assume uh, there will be DAO of DAOs, right? And then some of the decisions will be made in a small group and then uh, their re result will cast a vote on the larger group, and that needs interoperability as well. So these are the things that I'm having in my mind that can be adopting this uh, voting standard. Um, imagine one day that you don't need to go to various places; you just have a place to uh, to look at where all the on-chain issues are waiting for your decisions, and you can vote on them. Just like NFT will show up on some of the wallets. Um, and people will also compete for building the best uh, interface to display and query and serve the, the, the voting. And uh, yeah, that's what uh, it's in my mind. Does that answer your question? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I, I thank you for asking that. I, I really think this uh, um, the, the core of the core value that blockchain brings to the world is being able to um, put away trust on centralized authority. And uh, by now, through longest chain in Bitcoin and, or various different machine or consensus mechanism, we already know how to get consensus through machines. But human being getting consensus on chain is still very, very limited. And uh, without voting as a very fundamental building blocks, we lack a way for a human to reach consensus on chain to be represented on chain and without standardization i know that we already see some voting happening uh in prior arts uh but without standardization uh they we lack interoperability between smart contracts between d apps uh or between cross chains right imagine you are a cross chain builder or bridge builder building if there is a standard building one voting uh cross chain solutions means that they can support multiple different ones where but uh without a standard you have to build for each, each individual ones so that's what i see why there is need for a eip in this area so it's a little bit tangential to the question um but why did you choose to do this in ethereum instead of something like blockchain or whatever else or is there also work um in the other uh, tokens coin that that's a very good question i'm i actually need to i i'm so first of all i haven't think much deeper about of alternative i i know that uh for example the argon has its own if i understand it correctly has its own ch chain separate chain for voting and uh for what i my more of intuitive sense is that uh, Ethereum has been so, uh, has proven its uh, reliability and has proven its uh, usability uh, and utility amount in various uh, uh, various um, D apps and, and applications. Building on Ethereum for one is safer. Uh, it's, it has been proven uh, through the value locked in the, in the chain. Uh, it's safe and also it's um increases the cover uh, increases the reach 
that it can be used immediately in uh, various applications, right? If you if we aim at interoperability and on day one we don't have many good ways and to use it at all, then it's not so much value of bringing that interoperability, right? On the uh, alternatively, if we do this on uh, Ethereum, which already have many DH, the app, you can imagine. Uh, interoperability play a big role there, right? Uh, for example, three people can vote on chain to decide whether they will move some of the uh, liquidity pool out or inside. And that's an immediate uh, use cases uh, if it's built on Ethereum. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, uh, I see that uh, Pooja is, uh, is making the time check. Uh, so, um, um, the, if we want to go through the implementation, the, uh, one of the, there's two type that I'm working with. The third type probably is not what I would discuss today, but, um, the first one is the single input, single output ones that allow, uh, multiple options. It's a multiple single choice. Um, so we'll store the, we will have a, a, a mapping between uh, issues to the voter address to the to the option ID, and then we will also have the uh, issues to voter address to the option ID, uh, to the option ID for the uh, um, for the votes that's being casted, and uh, also we will have the vote counts that is stored. This is like nothing is optimized for uh, for efficiency, for the cost of gas or anything. It's just demonstrating that this works. So when you vote, we will validate it's a, uh, it, it, it's an existing issue uh, that is uh, has been created. And then we will also validate that options falls under the, uh, the list of uh, the option limit. For example, in this particular case, we have an option ID and then, so when you uh, when we validate the option ID, uh, the new options will be captured, and the op op uh, the old options will be. Uh, so in this particular the implementation, we choose to override the old option ID. So we'll we'll get the the votes of the last time when this um, voter has vote, and then we'll reduce the results, uh, and we will override it, and. Uh, um, we will now uh, increase the the uh, issue ID of the new uh, new votes, uh, and then we will uh, also remember who was voting, uh, what was what was the voting result, and who was uh, who was voting on what, and then we will emit the on on vote result, and so this is the 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 vote the core part, and on the top options because it's view we don't worry about the gas fee at all uh, so we will just do a very basic uh, we will we will just do a very basic founding for the the most voted options and then we'll we will output the most op, uh, voted options and metadata is just dummy ones so I will skip this part but I would envision the I would envision that the new, the real use cases, people will use the, this metadata a lot. Um, and for the setting status here, we're not um, have considered weights. We're not considered uh, like block number of uh, when the vote, the the uh, the vote is open or not. Uh, we will just assume that people, uh, the own, the admin or the owner will set the status for the open up for a vote, and then it will. Also, um, uh, it's uh, in this particular case, we'll set it to be not uh, settable and will always be open for uh, for voting. So it um, effectively become a pool of opinions and also people can change uh, what they believe, uh, what, what their uh, votes are. So this is, this is the one of the example of the uh, single input, single output. Let me see if the... So the multiple out input, multiple output is similar, and uh, uh, we are storing the um, voted results, and then we are also storing the uh, the the we're storing whether this uh, this voter has voted, 
and whether the uh, voter has uh, like their, their, the, the vote they cast it and the results of each options. And uh, for, that, for, for this particular one implementation, we would just assume that uh, people are voting and then uh, it's a plan multiple choice. There's no priorities in between. Um, so you have a limited, uh, it implements a limited uh, lens of options. If you uh, exceed it, it will yield error. And then uh, also we require the options to be uh, relevant to the options up, upper bound in particular. In actual implementations, we will anticipate that uh, implementers or actually issue creators will design how, how many options is available for, for that particular options. So that is also addressable through the issue ID of input. And as you as prior similar to prior uh, previous one, you see old options will be overridden, uh, or will not be allowed here. Uh, you will not allow, uh, we will not allow if this person have already votes. And so the, the one, once uh, we go past that, we will set the voted of this uh, sender uh, to be true so that the person cannot vote again. And then we'll calculate uh, the, the, uh, the results a tally again. And then we'll uh, also remember who votes on what and we will, we will output the emit and on vote event. So that's how you calculate the vote and the top options then will be calculating the max, the, the sorted result of it. Um, so that's trivial in, in a regular computer uh, programming. And so that's pretty much the two example. There's some other examples that we were working on, but uh, it's a little bit too expensive in gas fees and we're still working on addressing it. For example, the, we have some example of, uh, of ranked choice, but um, it's, we, we haven't been able to port it to Solidity. It's too, it becomes increasingly complicated in the, in, in the, um, in, the, uh, in, in the Solidity. So that's something we're working on. And that's, with that, uh, we complete the implementation part. I guess that would be very hard for audio only audience. <laughs> yeah. Now I wanna mention some and give credit to some of the notable prior arts. Um, so the MakerDAO governance uh, module, compound governance, Open Zeppelin has its governance module for people to use and Argon has its governance and a lot more. Uh, people are starting to see the value of having a DAO to organize their, their group and they want to be able to let people have their voice. Now, seeing these different uh, governance and seeing their interface differently is what is one of the big motivation of uh, creating this standard because even today, these groups uh, are important uh, and play an important role in the, in the ecosystem have not been able to standardize the way we're living, probably living in the, just like a time of Crypto Kitty, uh, that is NFT before 721. And I envision there will be an explosion of uh, proposals and votings and governance and DAOs if should we have a stable standard of voting. Uh, so that's what we why we want to create this EIP. And I addressed this question when Alita um, raised the question. I think it's very, very important that uh, the ecosystem has a way to get human consensus. Um, and uh, I also want to uh, like uh, give a big uh, thank you for Poja uh, audience of today and also um, Ethereum cat herders um, for allowing me to present this still very work in progress standard. Um, we want to call for the audience who are interested uh, in helping to join. Uh, if you, for everyone, we look forward to hear your ideas, your opinions, your comments, your critics on the design, design decisions that we make or we haven't made. And if you happen to be cryptography researchers, computer scientists, security scientists, there are areas that we 
like this current author groups were not had does not have enough expertise about right for example how do we allow anonymous voting right anonymous voting is used in many occasions uh, in many places but it seems in the public ledger it's very difficult to avoid revealing the identity of people who vote and one step further is that if how do you avoid people prove that they vote in such a way so that you can bribe people for voting in standard in particular way there is already some the app even allow people to delegate their votes to them and and to get a gain and we know that there's some use cases there but uh, we also hope that there is a way for uh, DAOs or for for groups of people to avoid such if they decide to right they if they want to make sure no one can get bribed for voting in such in certain way they can avoid that so that's still in a uh, cryptography research um, that needs to be done and uh, if you are social scientist or web3 researcher uh, we look forward to the help of an analyzing prior arts or other existing vote notable voting and summarize the design decisions for us to take into consideration. Ultimately, we hope to be massively flexible and be able to integrate with those prior arts, right? Imagine when we have a voting standard stabilized, we can people can write wrappers of this voting standards over other existing prior arts so that people can still vote on the existing, uh, existing projects without the existing project needing to change their interface. Um, and integrate with prior art and uh, for uh, and also propose extensions for area we stay opinionless right there's a many places we want to be flexible and opinionless but we do know there's a usability for uh, certain des design decisions so propose ex ERC extensions to those would be uh, we, we need help from ERC authors and build tests uh, and uh, for the implementations and the apps so all the different type of help we all need it. We look forward to your help. And you can um, ping me on uh, GitHub or uh, Twitter or LinkedIn, which is still in this page. Um, and the parting words would be, imagine one day everyone has a voice. All voices are heard, consensus can be reached and actions are made. That's the purpose of voting standard. Yeah, so that's the last slide. Well, thank you for this presentation. It was really awesome. I hope that this is a good piece to be shared with the technical colleges because this is one of the basic uh, use case of uh, blockchain. Well, I know there are some questions uh, from the audience. So yeah, if anyone has any question, please either drop in or you can also read it out for the guest. So it was basically like you have a, a database um, and then you have a key and then you just essentially like log to that uh, when a person votes or like, I guess the uh, the question is really like, is the, are the votes saved on chain or off chain? So that's, um, that's the part that we are keeping ourselves uh, um, opinion agnostic or opinionless. So we have, on in a high level, we design mostly for on-chain voting, uh, but you can also imagine how this can be used and designed in a way that uh, stores the uh, the vote and stores the vote result and tally outside of the chain by just um, interact with the with some additional. Uh, um, for example, you can without storing it, you can just emit the on on vote. Uh, uh, in, uh, events and then store it somewhere else. But um, in this case, particularly, we we kind of at lean towards having people store the everything on chain, if possible. But our the interface is designed a way that allows otherwise. Could you maybe expand on the idea of the options array? Exactly how the options array is working? Yes. So this is um, for the uh, for the uh, implementer to the, to decide if it become if it is a um, it is a um, 
single uh, Boolean questions. For example, do you support or not support this uh, this um, particular uh, particular issue or proposal? Then you can choose to represent your uh, for or against position in zero and one. However, let's say if you are voting in a political um, in a political campaign to decide a, a list of uh, board members or a company's board members. Sometimes, sometimes you might want to choose multiple ones from a list of candidates. Let's assume there's nine candidates and you want to choose three of them. And then you can also use the option IDs to designate the, um, the option. You can, you can give each candidate a number and then you can cast your votes by uh, with the proposal ID and then the candidate's number as the option ID in this. And let's assume you happen to live in somewhere that's used ranked uh, choice voting. And so that ranks matters in this case, then you can choose your order of preference to be uh, the same with the option IDs as an array. So by designing this as an array input of union, we open up the door for this various uh, possibility of designing the vote implementation. Interesting, thanks. Jose, did, did you have a question? Yeah, thank you. I mean, it's, it's, it's good, it's an excellent idea. I like it. I just wondering why not take it a little bit to the, you know, more day to day process like you know when you're gonna when you write a pull request you basically go through that process of voting you know from the approvals or editors or whoever has the authority to evaluate and approve it even if you are you're writing an issue depending on the repo you even go through that process i don't know maybe just take Take it. I mean, I, I I love the idea. It seems that it is great, but maybe just take it to the, you know, to the more day to day business. No, like it's not just a point to having you know the president election or, or board of directors. I mean, I, I like that. I mean, that's fine. But seeing that the idea has would have a huge impact if we manage to get it in the into also the day to day approach. You see what I mean? Yeah, I, I totally agree. Um, yeah, um, one of the one of the example I actually mentioned in the ERC is that multi sign on chain, right? We know that there's some multi sign solutions off chain, but let's say if you, um, for example, if you if, if if you have some miners that you are giving your wallet access to, and then uh, they will sign a contract, and then you need to approve it. And so that they can spend up to a certain amount. Uh, that's a, uh, I would imagine that's going to happen in the future. And now we'll also use some type of vote. Uh, let's say one of the parents uh, needs to decide whether to approve it or not. And people can decide through to a certain amount. Uh, two of them both will need to <laughs> approve it. Uh, that's, that will be one of the use cases. And the other use case is that uh, many of the current uh, Ethereum standard uh, contract deployed has a proxy of upgradability. Uh, so they will use one proxy to point to the current implementation. And then the owner of that proxy will be able to uh, point to the an another new implementation. And so approving this upgrade of the implementation should be a serious uh, community decisions rather than a single person will otherwise it will be just like a all the centralized uh software where everyone and there is one individual entity responsible for upgrading it and also they can make their own judgment and decisions to upgrade it so that's one other example of where people where we can use the voting standard to make sure that community are a community agree on something and that decisions are made upon and so uh, if I were to answer you of the day-to-day -day use case on blockchain uh, for leveraging the, uh, the, the, the use cases um, 
that would be two of my answers. Does, is that a good answer? Uh, do you think it's a, that answers your question of the day-to-day -day use case? I hope yes. All right. So I know we are um, a bit over time, but I have a few more questions that I can probably run quickly by you. Um, the first word is uh, about uh, EIP 165. So according to the proposal discussion, which we can find in the issue number 1202, uh, the discussion to links suggests that there, ha there are quite a lot of uh, uh, discussion and the proposal received fairly decent feedback. Most of them are positive. I'm curious to learn about the support to EIP 165. It is about one interesting comment by author of uh, EIP 721 NFT standard author William N. Triken. Can you share about the argument to support or not support EIP 165? I think we'll definitely support EIP 165. I don't think there is a particular reason not supporting it. Uh, EIP 165 provides a very, very useful way for uh, interface to be detected, to be used. And then I envision that a lot of different D apps and applications, smart contract will use the, uh, the standard in, uh, interface implementation. So for that, for sure, we will uh, implement it. Uh, I think that uh, we, we just haven't get the time to bake it into it. And also the ERC-165 depends on the interface you design and then that particular number needs to generate after we finalize the, the, all the methods and, and, and the signatures. So that's why we haven't gone there. Uh, but I think you point raise a very good question. Uh, it brings to me another question, another thing that I'm thinking in the design is that um, in the latest version of 721, there is a concept of safe transfer, right? The, which means that if you transfer this token to some contract, that contract has to be able to operate this particular uh, NFTs or in general, the NFT standards uh, in order to, so that it, the, it will be, not be permanent loss of, the, of this particular transfer token. And we might be thinking of, uh, um, of doing similar thing of requiring, uh, for example, if we delegate the um, the ability for uh, the delegate the the authority to vote, that authority to vote needs to be able to vote. Uh, so that interface, we will try to see if we need some kind of safely do something. We have not yet, and I vaguely few has a sense that that part needs to have a standardization that is relevant to 165, uh, which is have not yet. Uh, so if anyone is interested in working on that, um, I think that would be useful for all the future uh, standard designers, right? Uh, so um, I will, I, I, that's not, that would be my answer. We'll definitely, uh, to summarize, we'll definitely implement 165. And then we also look forward to implement some safe, safe net to interact with other uh, contract. And I feel that we, we need some standard there as well. Maybe a quick follow-up on that. Uh, you mentioned about integrating the support to EAP165. And earlier also in your presentation, you mentioned that supporting uh, to payable vote. Do you think it can probably delay status change of the proposal? Like how long do you think the implementation of all these things will need take? Yeah, probably take uh, another three months for overall. Uh, I uh, start as uh, for overall updates, um, decisions to be made and implementation before we can come back to the community uh, and, uh, and ask for final re reviews. Or maybe it will take shorter or longer, but the time three, three months is a timeline in my mind right now. And um, my goal right now is to uh, maybe talk to different various uh, prior art uh, builders to get their collector feedback, uh, because I, I know that they have made some des design decisions that is not fully uh, fully compatible right now in this ones and not fully compatible with each other. So soliciting their feedback and help uh, would be one thing I'm working on and <clears throat> yeah. That is good to know. Uh, while we are expecting some changes to the proposal, a suggestion, um, 
I saw one uh, particular section work directory. I don't think that is any more a standard uh, section to be added in EIP. So maybe you can consider removing that particular section. And also uh, reference implementation, it is not added to the proposal. So when you are updating the proposal to maybe get it ready for review, uh, it would be nice to have these things considered. Yeah, we'll probably need a lot of different uh, implementation, reference implementations. It can go very various uh, different ways. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. uh, it would be good to have them uh, added there. That will be helpful for people who would like to uh, refer to it in future. Yes. My next question is related to security consideration. And this is my second last question. I'll try to make it quick. Is there anything important uh, into security consideration that you would like to mention that any developer who would want to implement this proposal in, your, in any of their project maybe um, consider that in mind? Yeah, there's a lot of uh, security considerations. Uh, so, um, so first of all, um, it is very easy to get the uh, to 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 get the weight wrong, right? For example, if you are use a lot of times we you use the NFT ownership or the uh, or the, uh, the the tokens they uh, they own number of tokens they own to become the weights. Now, if you decided to lock the the weights up, make sure that locking mechanisms are are safe. Otherwise, you'll be locked. If mistake happens there, you'll be locking people's tokens forever, or uh, or break the assumptions of of ledge of a ledger. So that is the the key part. I think can go wrong very very badly. And the other thing is that the more subtle, but usually uh, like for a massive adoptions, usually people assume they will use their own daily day to day voting experience to re to 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 uh, refer to when they use the voting applications on chain but didn't know that for example their identity will be reviewed or uh things like that so that is a more of a social side of security and it's non-trivial to to maintain anonymity and anonymity can go very wrong in some ways for example people will know that's uh, how uh, how you vote and uh, in how much you vote in weights uh, prior to they vote. That's one possibility, right? Because everything is on chain, and that assumptions are not very common in the day to day uh, voting experience right now. So um, application builder needs to be aware of that need to let the user know that, and also understand they can open up to various way of gaming the system. So that's all very non-trivial. It opens, I think it's a whole different um, conversations and we'll probably have another hour to discuss the security issues here. And we also look forward to security experts in, in, in this side. Well, thank you so much. Even the brief description is helpful. Um, obviously when proposal are going through some changes, maybe we can revisit the proposal after some time when it is ready for going into different statuses. Yes. Talking about statuses, like I understand this proposal was proposed about four years ago. And I remember seeing conversation moving it to the last call. Now that you are considering adding some more things to it, I just want to make a mention of it. Like since 2018 till 2022, the process has changed a little bit. And now there is a status called review, which is in between draft and last call. So. I hope with changes, we can see this proposal coming up into review status. Do you have by any chance, any um, expected timeline that you would like to share? Yeah, I think that would be, uh, that's what when I mentioned three months of timeline oh, to you. move beyond last call and, and reviews. I, I think prior to this last call was like two weeks as a minimum. Mm -hmm. That's yeah, right. It, if that's still the case, yeah, it will be like, we'll do last call. And then if nothing comes up, then we'll do review on the word. But yeah, it can take longer as we see another standardization. Right, but first it needs to go into review status and there is no wait time for review. So whenever you're oh, ready okay. to share, you can definitely change it to review. And once you think that it is all ready, 
by review, what we mean is like all EIP registers should pay attention. And even if uh, there are tap developers, they would like to provide you feedback, they can come forward and share things with you. After a few days, that's totally up to the author. After a few days, you can move it to last call. But in last call, we have this fixed duration of two weeks, not for review. Got it. Sounds good. Yeah, thanks for noting that. Uh, that's very helpful. Thank you. It's time to wrap up. Anything else you would like to share with our viewers related to this proposal or in general? Um, I think that's pretty much it. I, I just really uh, am grateful for you uh, giving this opportunity for me to share and all to collect your feedback. Your questions are greatly valued and I'll continue to uh, work with the group work group to drive this forward. And hopefully one day everyone can have their voice heard. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for sharing uh, this proposal with us. I hope the information shared today will be helpful for students and upcoming developers building projects on blockchain. And I hope that this proposal move forward faster than it had in the past, so we can have a standard added to the Ethereum repository soon. Thank you very much. On this note, thanks to all our YouTube viewers for watching it. If you have implemented this EIP in your project, share with us, comment in the comment section below. Let us know if you have any follow-up question on the proposal. You can also join the discussion uh, on the discussion tool link provided on the proposal. Check out description for detail and the related links that also contains guest Twitter. If you have any question, you may be able to reach to the guest as well. If you have got any suggestion on this EIP or any other EIP, let us know on Catherine's Discord or you can also tag us on Twitter. Subscribe to Ethereum Catherine's YouTube channel if you haven't done it already. See you next time with another interesting proposal. Till then, keep watching, keep sharing your love with Ethereum Catherine's. Thank you. Have a good rest of your day.